uh, whether they're useful or not. So I'm doing something different. I'm using the tool that only became available since the last uh, uh, semester or so, uh, uh, generative AI. And, um, and we'll see how well uh, GPT does on uh, on uh, questions like this. I don't think, yeah, so, and uh, I think I did mention this. With uh, Physics 4B, I've actually never used the ChatGPT because last time I taught this class was uh, fall 2023, no, sorry, 2022, and that was before ChatGPT became a big thing. So um, the performance of uh, uh, perplexity with the GPT-4 here, it's, uh, I don't really have anything to compare to other than, you know, if it's correct or not. So we'll start with the first two question and then just work our way through. I'll read the, the responses and let you know if I disagree with anything there. Okay. Okay. Because yeah, they're electrically neutral. You know, equal number of positive and negative charges, protons and electrons. Yeah, that's great. Excellent answer. <laughs> Most of the extra tend to be. How I do? Oh, uh, yeah. It, uh, it, uh, I guess you could call it that. Sure. Um, I mean, eh. not the approach I would have taken, but I wouldn't also call it wrong. So the way I phrase it in the model answer is... Um, so almost a tautological. Like if you have an object that's really highly charged, it'll tend to attract um, opposite charges. So it doesn't, um, unless it's in a vacuum, very well insulated uh, from electrically insulated from other charges, it, uh, it it attracts enough of the opposite charges to become neutral. So uh, there's kind of tautological aspect to it. So okay, so this is kind of I guess what I'm wincing at here. The principle of energy minimization. That might be a thing. Uh, what I do know is that that's a thing that we don't cover in this class. So when someone brings that up, that my first question that would come up in my head is, hey, where did that come from? Did that come from ChatGPT? <laughs> and if it did, what work did you put in? And, you know, just to reemphasize, ethical use of generative AI is a lot. And if you want to be able to defend your use, you want to be able to say that you used it ethically then you should be using this graded discussion. I gave you a forum where you can uh, post your prompt and the AI response and so that you are revealing your sources and you are making it clear what, if anything, you have added for, through your own understanding. So you should be doing that. If you are doing that and you are using generative AI within your answering process for assignment, other than timed assessment, I, I think I can make a piece with that because it comes down to a matter of academic honesty and if we are doing it in a way that's ethical. Yeah, so, okay, uh, have these questions. Uh, let's see, I think you copied over okay. Okay, let me ask that. Do they have to be charged? Uh, no, they don't both have to be charged. Uh, there's a like way to arrange things. Uh, answer the second repel then they don't both have to be charged uh, oh so the second part of part a has to be that they both have charged. yeah okay let's see their answers two bodies can attract each other even if one is on charge because yeah charge is separation that is a keyword or you could also say polarization so within the object there's a zero net charge but one side has more positive, one side has more negative. Um, that you could call the charge separation or polarization. And that would, uh, yeah, polarization, <laughs> that would uh, lead to an imbalance of force between that and the other charge it's interacting. So, uh, in fact, in chemistry, I think you call that what? Van der Waals force? It's a force that between like a gas molecules that are neutral. And the way Van der Waals force arises is through like a some vacuum quantum fluctuation and then there's a um there's a interaction between one polarized thing and another polarized thing so yeah although that sounds right if uh, oh wait, wait did they say um repels like charges uh the second part of the question the unlike charges as uh, if two bodies repel each other yeah it means they are both charged and have like charges so in this case actually they do have to be charged uh, if one is completely uncharged, then it'll develop a polarization that's attractive. So, yeah, wow. Good answer. Um, 
Charge the Q's attractive to the large metal plate. Yeah, plate does not have to be charged. I have one of the free form timed assessment that I guess you'll see in like two, three weeks <laughs> has this scenario. <laughs> Q could be, uh, yeah, pol polarization, same thing. Uh, except in a conductor, it ha happens more extremely uh, to the point that within the conductor, the electric field will be zero. We think we cover it either this week or next week. Uh, yeah. I, I, the overall good answer, I kind of stopped reading at some point when I just thought, oh, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, small pieces of tissues. Um, I wonder what it will do if I leave this in, because GPT has no idea what this is. It doesn't even know what chapter I'm referring to. So um, let's see. It might ask for a follow-up question or not. Okay. Um. Well, let's uh, include this. Uh, maybe just that. I, I don't think that's actually all that helpful, but let's give that a try. Electrostatic induction? Not really. Um, no, not electrostatic induction. So you do have demo videos of electrostatic induction, so you can watch it. And that doesn't really have anything to the tissue paper here. Uh, let's see when the comb is charged. Excess charge, okay, good. In your in induces a charge separation, okay. Polarization, that's good. Um, uh, yeah, attracted, okay. When the tissue touches the comb. Yeah, they pick up some of the excess. Now, because tissue is insulator, this won't happen quickly. But I've seen where if a balloon or other insulators are in contact long enough with a charged metal, the some charges must uh, transform it, like they fall off. I've seen that. Um, have similar charges and yeah, like charges repel. Okay, that seems right. And so it never really explained how this is a classic example of electrostatic induction. Sometimes uh, generative AI kind of puts together word salad. So that might just be an errant phrase that it could have just taken out and it would have been actually a better answer. Um, yeah, and charge conservation, uh, maybe. Um, I, I don't know. The connection is a little bit weaker, but I mean, it's a true. The fact that charge is conserved is true enough of a statement. All right, I'm gonna move on. That looks like a good enough of an answer. Um, would you, would the defining a charge have, okay. Okay, again, I don't think it knows this equation number, but you know, it actually does have access to like a liberate text, which has a version of our open text text. So it might actually know what equation 5.1 or 5.2 are. It might actually have that in its training text. So it would not have any, yeah. Uh, now it's a dependent on charges, not the sign convention. Formula. This is, by the way, LaTeX notation. If you this was a LaTeX text, then this would turn into like a mathematical looking thing. Uh, italics mostly. Okay. You were to switch the sign convention, flipping signs up. Yeah, and you, it shows that's a good explanation. Although I don't know, oh, that's a squared. Um, but, oh, it's wrong. Force magnitude will not be affected, but that, that this is actually wrong. Uh, let me see where it's getting this wrong thing. It's possible that it's getting, you know, Quizlet, that's one of those cheating websites. So one of the reasons I object to people using the cheating website is that some of the material there are not good quality. So this is Definitively wrong statement. Let me read the rest. Charges are like unlike. Yeah, and this is be because of this, the for direction of force shouldn't change. Um, positive two electrons, which uh, carrying like it would repel, and they were already repelling each other before. Electron, yeah, it, like this has nothing to do with our sign convention. Uh, it, it, so, yeah, let's look at that link. Would you defining would any, <laughs> I guess someone must just copy and paste the, the open text question. 
Um, yeah, yeah. So whatever this is, so I'm not gonna create an account to view the rest, but whoever was answering it, they weren't simply that good at physics. That's why they got it wrong. Um, you know, if you ask why do cheating websites have poor material, it's because people contributing to those are not good physicists. If they were, they would have a better paying jobs. <laughs> but, uh, but let me maybe explain, because um, uh, I think especially in the latter half of this week, this I can imagine this actually does uh, coming as up as a question for people. It's a let's make question because you have expressions like this. As we are introducing electric field, we have expressions like uh, electric force is equal to charge times the electric field. So someone could have a let's estimate question. So if you change the sign of Q by change of convention, that is, uh, for example, charge of electron is plus E, and charge of a proton is minus e. You just make that convention change. Then wouldn't you see, oh, so I have a force, it's a linearly dependent on Q. So if I'm replacing Q with a minus Q, then um, didn't my force change the direction because of this minus sign? Let's make question. And this is what you have to consider in scenario like that. What you have to consider is the, um, the next level question of where did the electric field come from? So if you are considering a simple scenario, like an interaction of um, proton and an electron. So with the convention we have now, what that interaction would look like is through the medium of electric field, it would look like a positive charge which is the proton, which generates an electric field going out from that positive charge. And when you place a negative charge here on electron, for example, then um, so you kind of work through the direction of the electric field um, and um, negative charge, the force goes in the opposite direction from the electric field. So the force would uh, point in this direction. That's uh, how you would figure. And this is all consistent with opposites attract. So when you make a change like this, a change of convention, where the same change has to be applied to everything, not just a single object, you have to consider the fact that you are changing the sign of the proton as well. This becomes negative charge. So you, the electric field that you had set up with this change of convention, it would be pointing towards the proton. So when you with this change of convention, the electron now becomes a positive charge. Well, the positive charge, it feels a force in the same direction as the electric field, which is going that way. So as far as the force is concerned, either before the convention change or after, the direction of force hasn't changed, then it shouldn't. Um, that I hope with the, the introductory description we used, you know, likes repel, opposites attract, I hope you intuitively got because you're a thinking human person and not a, uh, not a uh, bad tutor, <laughs> bad tutor <laughs> or a generative AI. Hopefully uh, something raised a question in you. And this is a, a kind of explanation going through the device of electric field that, yeah, even going through the device of electric field, the electric force shouldn't change direction. Okay, so that's that question, um, which um, GPT got a little bit wrong. Um, uh, but, uh, well, it got a little bit wrong because it's ref referencing a website <laughs> where people contribute with wrong answers. <laughs> Let's look at the very last question and wrap this up. If the electric field at all, yeah, I'm gonna paste this. Uh, between uh, yeah, the charges has to be the same sign in order for electric field to be possible to be zero there. Um, equally magnetic opposite direction. Yeah, they have to be like charges. Then between the two charges, you can find a spot where the uh, net electric field or the net force will be zero. 
Unlike charges, yeah, outside the region, uh, there are some. Uh, I think timed assessments that you will see, where um, you have something that kind of looks like a number line, um, you know, for one dimensional placement of charges. So you have something that maybe looks like a number line, and you have a charge here, another charge here. Let's say opposite charge. That in between these two, there's no place where electric field will be zero. Because one is, uh, imagine a positive test charge. Uh, one is pu pushing it to the right, and the other is pulling it to the right. So they will always add up to some non-zero value. But once you start considering regions out here, you can find places where um, the the net force or the net electric field due to these two charges add up to zero. Kind of depends on the magnitude of charges, which is larger. Um, but uh, let me just leave that there. That uh, the outside regions, you may be able to find um, zero electric field. And was that one of the possible answers? Electric field at a well, point on the line between the two charges is zero. So this uh, is a, a rolled out from that. Uh, yeah, from this information. Uh -huh. Outside, yeah, yeah. And so good answer, a little bit longer than it needs to be. But, yeah. yeah, so that's the uh, your conceptual questions. Again, if you do use a generative AI, make sure you use it ethically. Um, and what that ethical use amounts to is, uh, I hope, it amounts to that when you are using tools like this, your focus should be in learning physics because um, there are other things that you will cover in upper division where it depends on you not just knowing the answers, but knowing also why the correct answer is correct so that you can build up on that and uh, do more sophisticated things that we don't get to in this class.